Windows 10 versus Windows 11 input latency. This one is a long time coming where I've wanted to test back and forth between the OSs, seeing if you use one or the other, are you going to get lower input lag, which will ultimately help you when you are playing PC games on getting the fastest draw of frame on your monitor, which means that if you're playing competitive titles especially, you'd wanna have the lowest input lag possible. Now here's where for this testing, we tested with a 360 Hertz ASUS monitor. Also when I was in Japan, I did test with the Philips Evnia 175 Hertz. But essentially what we do here is we've got this hooked up to a mouse left click and it's hooked up to a light. So when we click it, we get informed of the actual click and then we shoot at a thousand FPS and what this enables us to do is then count the frames for one millisecond and then analyze the time it takes for the mouse button to be pressed and the image to come out on the screen, which then we can count the frames back and then see what the input delay was of the total system from start to finish. This is my favorite way of testing input lag. There's no gimmicks, there's no bull involved, and it just gives you consistently good results just like the first result here we're gonna pull up, which is actually with Windows 10 versus Windows 11, it's not so much the OSs themselves as it is these three security settings, Secure Boot, Trusted Platform Technology, and TPM 2.0. When I had these on with Windows 10, we actually saw very similar input lag to Windows 11, which Windows 11 requires you to have these things on to install the OS, at least a default install of the OS. And when we turn them off on Windows 10, we then saw a drop of three milliseconds. Now you're probably thinking, Brian, whoa, three milliseconds, that's nothing. That's nothing to worry about. I'm just staying with Windows 11. But here's where we actually did a lot more testing after the fact. And I realized that if you're on Windows 10 or Windows 11, then you're definitely gonna wanna keep watching this video because there are some big settings in the OS itself that can affect your input delay heavily, especially for gaming. So let's get right into it though, after today's video sponsor, where a lot of this testing wouldn't be possible with VIP SCD keys, which have a great deal on a single end user activated license on Windows 10 Pro or Windows 11 Pro for as little as $15 for the Windows Pro license if you use the coupon BFTYC and the link in the description below. And if you wanna get Windows 11 Pro, that's a little bit more, but the funny thing is you can just use the Windows 10 Pro key for Windows 11 Pro and it works absolutely fine, at least all the times I've used it personally. And then of course, they've got Windows 10 Home if you wanna save a few dollars there and they've got other software. So big thanks for them for sponsoring out today's video. I'll put some links in the description below. Let's continue, however, with the next biggest thing. And this was all these applications that I had on Windows 10 after I've installed all my video editing software. There is a big culprit here and it's called Adobe Cloud Center. More specifically, the update services that come installed with this application introduced on average a five millisecond delay, which was actually really concerning considering it must mean that there's something else going on in the background here. Perhaps there's telemetry, I'm just not sure, but that five millisecond delay can mean the difference ultimately between a good frag and a bad death. And this is in the form of applications and services that run in the background. In fact, some of these applications and services, they don't ask you to install themselves, they just automatically install themselves and decide to even run on startup without you even knowing. And what we did here was before and after, where we had these services on, this was just a regular install on my PC using Windows 10 updates. Of course, I've even tuned my Windows 10 using my Windows 10 Tune Optimizer Guide. And here is where we saw on average an 18 millisecond difference when we disabled all these crappy services and apps that just push themselves without you even knowing and before and after is just huge. We tested this in CS2, formerly CSGO, where the best draw that we got was eight milliseconds. On average here, we were getting around 10 milliseconds. And here's where the average went up to 28 milliseconds with the best draw being 22 and the worst being 34. And this is extremely surprising seeing as a lot of people are going to be just installing their games, they're installing their services, installing their applications that they do for work, 
but they're going to be affected by quite a sizable amount of input lag that's just automatically creeping up on their desktop. Though testing out all these applications individually, I know some of you are gonna say, which application is it specifically? If I was to test all these applications individually one by one, I'd just be here for a whole year. And in that time, there's gonna be new apps, new services that pop up in place of the old ones just to trick you guys. So my recommendation here is when you're in Windows 10 or Windows 11, always make sure your system is running lean. If you've got these services or applications that you know you didn't install and you don't need them, I'd recommend disabling them like I've done so with my own system and saw a great benefit. Now, in terms of focusing on one application in particular, for example, I knew that Adobe introduced some sort of input delay to my system because I did a fresh install for videos that I've done in the past. And then I installed Adobe and I noticed it was just that little bit less snappier. And then doing the testing here, we found that for instance, if you've got Adobe Cloud, the service, which you actually don't need to have on if you wanna use, uh, for instance, Adobe Premiere Pro or Photoshop, if you've got this service on, it'll actually introduce five to six milliseconds of delay consistently on your computer. So that's one culprit out of the many culprits that can just creep up on your PC and cause you some nasty delay. Though if you think that's all, we've got some more testing that I'm gonna show you up on the screen here in a second. But in the meantime, what I wanna say is the first testing that we've done here is software based. So the best way to get around this and make sure you got the lowest input lag is firstly, maybe use Linux, where you're just installing what you're getting. Or second, make sure your Windows 10 or Windows 11 is just tuned and it's tuned to perfection. Though, the difference between Windows 11 and Windows 10, as we said earlier, was that Windows 11, especially the official version, requires those securities. And so it's going to add three milliseconds versus a Windows 10 that doesn't have those security features enabled. Of course, with Windows 11, you can get custom versions that do get around this. I just preferred my work style in Windows 10 was better. I find it's a leaner OS and there's just more functionality for what I do personally. However, that debate over, Let's move into now to some more important input lag settings because I want to get to the bottom of this for you guys and get you running at the best competitive experience that you possibly can, whether you're doing work or you're doing gaming. For me personally, I actually prefer doing this to having the lowest input lag for when I'm doing my work. And so here's where if you've got, for instance, an LG OLED TV, this was something that I noticed. If you've got to make sure this is on game mode, because if it's not on game mode, it's actually going to introduce around 40 milliseconds of delay, which is actually quite sizable. So to make sure this is on game mode, you can just go into your settings, turn it on the game mode, and then also turn on the instant game response in the menu, and then you'll be tasting better input lag on your TV if you're using that for a monitor. Now, in terms of gaming monitors, they've also got options, low input lag. I would heavily recommend always turning these on for the best experience while you're using your PC. Now, another thing is too, of course, there's mice, there's keyboards, they have their own input delays depending on the brand. Me personally, I've said this in the past, I always like to use either a Razer or a Logitech mouse. There's also ExtraFi, companies like Final Mouse. If it's a reputable brand, it's most likely going to have extremely low input lag. I just know from personal experience when I've done these tests, the Razer and also the Logitech have virtually zero input delay, which is great for testing and eliminating one variable that could otherwise introduce input lag. If you were to go with a brand that you don't know of, you can introduce up to 10, even 20 milliseconds of input delay just by going like that. Now, the final thing to talk about, of course, is the monitor itself. Monitors have variants in input delay. For instance, some of the best monitors I've tested out on the market, actually the best I've tested out to date, was Philips and their Evnia lineup, which had incredibly low input delay. I would measure it somewhere in the vicinity of zero to one milliseconds. Then behind me is the Asus 360 Hertz. That would introduce maybe two milliseconds of input lag. So the Evnia is actually faster than that, even though that has 360 Hertz versus the 175. However, you can get your random gaming monitors off Amazon. It could introduce up to 50 milliseconds of delay, just like we saw with the TVs, if they are not in low input lag mode. Anyhow guys, with all that aside, I'm gonna be doing some testing. I know a lot of you guys have requested I do some tests with Linux. I'm gonna be doing that in the near future, especially on games, testing out the input delay on Linux. I do have a gut feeling it's probably gonna be the best because the kernel on Linux is actually better 
than that of Windows. So I'm looking forward to doing that test. And if you guys wanna see that the moment it drops, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell. And also, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit that like button for us. But what we saw with today's video was, if you've got all these settings, if you've got a poorly optimized Windows with all this bloat on it, if you've got a bad monitor with high input lag, bad mouse, you can see anywhere up to an extra 100 milliseconds on your total system. Now, if you're playing someone who's got a really good internet connection, they're getting pings of say three to five milliseconds on their actual internet, and then they've got all this low input lag and they're getting draws of say uh, eight milliseconds, they're gonna have maybe 11 milliseconds in total. And if you're adding on, say for instance, you've got good internet, three milliseconds, but then you're adding on 100 milliseconds, they're going to be beating you a lot of the time because you've now got a 100 millisecond disadvantage, which nowadays with uh, internet being fiber in a lot of places, a lot of people are going to have good internet and low pings. However, if you are on a wireless connection or you're on a satellite connection and things like that, that is obviously gonna introduce some of its own input delay. If you wanna check how fast your internet is, you can just do a simple speed test and that'll tell you the actual millisecond delay from your internet itself, which is also a really important factor in getting the lowest input lag possible, especially if you're playing competitively online. Anyhow, guys, with all that aside, things like this can make a difference, especially if you're playing at a pro level or if you're just someone who used to play a game really well and then you're suddenly wondering why, say for instance, you just changed your whole setup and you're wondering why you just suck. This could definitely be a big factor as to why you're sucking. But of course, you could suck because you just suck at games too. Maybe <laughs> that's one option as well. Anyhow, guys, I will catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Oh wait, we got the question of the day. And this comes from Dog with Butter. Not dog, dog. And it will be bottlenecked by a 5700X. Don't recommend a Zen 4 processor because I've already bought a motherboard. So what this question is referring to is we did a PC with an RTX 3070 and a 5700X. And that CPU, the eight core 16 threads, it's not going to bottleneck the 3070 at all. When we looked at the GPU utilization, when we had our metrics on, it was going near 100% on all the games we tested, which means that the 5700X is going to be a great CPU, especially combined with an RTX 3070. And even if you're going with like an RTX 3090 and stuff, especially if you're playing at high resolutions, it's not going to be a problem either. Hope that answers that question, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.